Hey, welcome to Family Church. We are a diverse, spirit-filled, life-giving church, healing hurts, building relationships, and developing leaders. My name is Pastor John Mark. I'm so excited that you've connected to our page today. Be sure to grab a notebook, a pen, a paper, your phone, however you want to take notes and get ready for today's message. Welcome back to part two of Battlefield of the Mind. Last week, we talked about civil war, a war between two opposing sides of the same organization or country. Today, we're continuing that series. Is that okay? Pay no attention to what's happening behind me. Just pay attention to my voice. Today's topic is called cleaning the mess hall. Cleaning the the mess hall, we're gonna talk about what to do with all that garbage in your mind. What are you gonna do with all that garbage in your mind? And please forgive the staff for dumping all the trash. This is just stuff that we had lying around. We, we haven't dealt with this trash yet. Dealing with it would mean taking it out to the dumpster. But you know, sometimes we just take trash and we shove it in garbage bags and just put it in closets. We just get it out of the way, especially if people are going to come over or they're going to have a meeting. We'll just take trash and we'll just shove it somewhere and not deal with it. Does anybody's living room look like this? <laughs> Is anybody offended today that we trashed the house of God? Nobody's offended that we put our trash all over the stage in the house of God. Let me ask you a question. Does any room of your house look like this? Does your bedroom look like this? Does your garage look like this? Maybe, maybe, it might, it might. Does your basement look like this? Yes? <laughs> Nasty. So maybe the house that you pay a mortgage on each month or pay rent for doesn't look like this, but maybe the house you live in mentally does. Maybe the thoughts that are in your mind are trashy. You know, any thought outside of faith is a trashy thought. Any thought of doubt is trash. Any thought of unbelief is trash. Any thought that isn't consistent with what God's word says about your life is trash. Feeling defeated is a trashy thought. I wanna say this to you today, maybe you're new to the church and you're wondering why a bunch of people could get excited about singing a song on stage in a church. Well, listen man, I love going to concerts and I've seen people act wild for less causes than the cause of the kingdom, right? I've seen people take clothing off and throw it on stage. <laughs> Don't do that here. <laughs> Keep your clothes on. But maybe you're here and you're like, I can't understand why this, like everyone gets so screaming and excited about singing a song. We were talking about victory. Right, we're talking about winning. Yeah. And the truth is, many of us today are not winning at life. We're not winning at our jobs. We're not winning at home. A lot of the issues really is what's happening at home. We're not winning at home. Men, men need to win. Men need to have wins. They need to know that they've done a good job. We're kind of like dogs. We need to be pet. We say good boy. <laughs> Let's just be for real, guys. Right? But when we're not winning, right? I'm, I'm going to talk to the men for one second. When we're not winning, we're not winning at work, then we get home, and then we did something that ticked our wife off, and now we're not winning at home, where do we get a win? Ladies, where do you get a win? You go to work, you come home, and you didn't cook the right meal that he was in the mood for today. Right. He gave you no expectation, you just cooked one of the three meals that you always cook. <laughs> I'm just sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Right? But we're not winning. We don't feel like we're winning, so we're singing a song. I'm going to see a victory. 
The issue is like, when we sing songs like that, we're projecting this idea of it's gonna be way, way down in the future. One day I'm gonna get a victory. Like, when I go to heaven, I'm gonna get a victory. No, today. The truth of the matter is we need wins today. The truth of the matter is we gotta renew our minds to the reality of how blessed we are today to live in a country that we can freely worship by choice. I'm gonna rabbit track, but I really feel this, man. Like, we have a choice to worship, and post-COVID, a lot of people have stopped choosing to worship. It's time to get back in the habit of going to church online. It's time to get back in the habit. Here's the funny thing, right? Oh, I don't wanna go here. I don't wanna go here. You can't, even, you can't even imagine the amount of emails and messages online I get about people asking me if the vaccine is the mark of the beast. Like, like you, you can't believe it, right? But what is in the Bible, what is in the Bible is do not forsake the assembling of yourselves together as has become the custom of some. And we're living it. We're living Bible prophecy right now, happening. Anyway, freebie, totally freebie, all right. Listen, our houses might not look like this, but I would tell you that maybe we have the wrong definition of what the house of God is. So, okay, some of you are like, yeah, that's kind of nasty that you did all that to the stage, but I'm not offended. But really, we should clean up the house of God but I would say maybe you don't know what the house of God is. 2 Corinthians six fourteen says this, do not be yoked together with an unbeliever, for what do righteousness and wickedness have in common? So I know a lot of times the church preaches this, that don't be married, a Christian and a non-Christian, but this is actually talking about a business transaction. Don't, don't become business partners with unbelievers, okay? What fellowship can light have with darkness? What harmony is there between Christ and Belial? But what, what does a believer have in common with an unbeliever? What agreement is there between the temple of God and idols? Watch, for we are the temple of the living God. You are the house of God. The Holy Spirit lives and abides and dwells inside of you. So I just want to say, maybe the Holy Spirit is having to sift through some trash in your head. See, I was going to trash the whole auditorium. I was. I was going to have trash all over your seats, all over the floor, and you were going to actually have to like move it out of the way to like worship or to stand or to get a seat. Like it was going to be horrible. And then I realized then I'd have to clean all that up. <laughs> and I just wasn't in the mood for it. So this is easier. And then I was going to do it to the stage for worship, and then they were going to have to kick it out of the way. And I, just, I just wonder how many times is the Holy Spirit like moving my unbelief out of the way? to try to work a miracle in my life? How much doubt is the Holy Spirit trying to kick away to do something? How many bad ideas and bad habits and bad thoughts is having to be cleared out of my mind each and every day? We're the house of God, our beings. So the question is, what kind of house are you keeping for the Holy Spirit? Is it clean? Is it dirty? Is it decorated? Is it plain? Is it organized? Are things just shoved? You know what I've realized? People who are really clean in their houses are horrible organizers. They're clean, but they just shove everything in closets and drawers. And then people who are really, really organized and all their drawers and closets are all organized, they're not as clean. It's just like one, I don't know. If you're both, you're like Martha Stewart. <laughs> so here's some questions about the living space of the Holy Spirit, is he having to live in your trashy thoughts, your garbage-infested thinking, leftovers of doubt and unbelief, empty, vain, and selfish brainwaves? What kind of environment, what kind of house is like a modern and edgy and techie house? Or is it run down, beat up, need some maintenance, need some upkeep? Because you're in control of that. You're in control of that. Proverbs 4.23, written by the wisest man who's ever existed. He said, above all else, above everything else you do, guard your heart with all diligence, for out of it flows the issues of life. Guard your heart because everything you do flows from it. 
If, if we're a triune being, spirit, soul, and body, and all three of these interconnect, where they interconnect would be your heart. The interconnection of all three parts of who you are would be your heart. And it says, guard that spot of your life. Because listen, man, I'm telling you something right now. We've all done stupid stuff when our heart got hurt. Oh, let your spouse say something that hurts your heart. You're going to say something stupid. You're about to let stupid out the box. Right? Mm. Let me ask you this question. Is there trash in our lives and in our minds? Before you, before you think that this message is to induce shame and make you feel bad, I wrote this sermon to me. This sermon was to me to get out of my head, to fix some garbage that was happening in my life. So don't think for a minute that any of what I'm saying is attacking anybody. This was for me, and I thought maybe you could benefit from it today. This garbage all over the stage is unattractive because garbage in our lives is unattractive. Cleanliness and excellence brings about comfort. People are not comfortable when they go over your house and your dirty underwear is on the floor in your living room. That is not comfortable. Am I supposed to be here right now? Because your drawers is on the floor. Garbage does not bring cleanliness, it doesn't bring comfort or excellence. Some of us in here today, the stage, this mess, for some of us in here today and watching online, this is a picture of your sex life. It's trashy and it's messy. Some, it's a picture of your relationship with your spouse. It's a mess. Some, it's a picture of your self-image. This is how you see yourself. I'm worthless. I'm nothing. I'm garbage. Some of us, this stage is a picture of our vocabulary. The words that come out of our mouth, they're trashy. They're hurtful. They don't bring life. The Bible says, guard your mouth. Let no corrupt communication come out of your mouth, but only that which is uplifting to those who would hear it. Are the words that are coming out of your mouth uplifting and life-giving to people who hear them? This might be an image of the movies that you watch, trashy, video games that you play, things that you look at on your cell phone. This stage might be an image of that. There might be some trash in your life that needs cleaning up. And I want you to know this sermon is not a shame fest. This sermon is we can do life better. We can be happier. We can be more fulfilled. We can love ourselves better when we start cleaning up the trash. This stage <coughs> is an image of many of our minds which is part of the human condition, the human condition. The human condition is the constant need for improvement because we are fallen, broken, in need of a savior. Watch this, Romans 12, two says this, do not conform to the patterns of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Be transformed by the renewing of your mind. We need to go in there and clean some stuff up in our minds. Then you will be able to test and prove what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. Do you really want to know what's in your heart and in your mind? Do you really want to know? Because a lot of people are not self-aware. Do you really want to know what your heart is full of? Listen to yourself talk. What are you constantly talking about? What are you constantly saying? Are the conversations that you are involved in, are they life-giving or are they negative? I gotta be honest with you, I'm repulsed by negativity. I have to stay away from it. I'm negative enough to destroy my own life. If I'm hanging around someone on a social level and it's just negative, 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 did you see and did you hear? And I'm like, yo, I gotta go. Like, I mean you to disrespect, I love you, we're good. If you need me, I'm here but I gotta go. 
I need to be around positivity. You're killing my vibes, baby. Right? I can't come down. I can't bring myself down like that. Like, match, match me where I'm at. Meet me, meet me up here a little bit. Pull yourself up because I can't do this. Listen, I will destroy myself if I let negative thoughts run my mind. Amen. Let alone let anybody else feed me negativity. What are you always talking about? What are you always thinking about? What are you always drawn to? This is an indication of what you're full of. What kind of YouTube videos are you watching? It's an indication of what you're drawn to and what you're full of. If I looked at your internet history, if I looked at your browser history, and if I looked at your television history, I would tell you what you're full of. The truth of the matter is 80% of people do not read a single book after college. Eight, when I heard that stat, 80% of people don't read a book after college. Are you kidding me? No wonder we're dumb. <laughs> Seriously. Like, we're going to bank on lies of television to educate us as to what we need to be doing and thinking nowadays? It's wild. It's wild. Matthew 12, 34 says this. For out of the overflow of your heart, your mouth speaks. So I'm going to say it this way. This is the way I learned it. Out of the abundance of your heart, your mouth speaks. Whatever your heart is full of is going to come out your mouth. If I squeeze an orange, what's going to come out? Orange juice. Why? Because that's what it's full of. It's full of orange juice. And when squeezed, it's going to come out. I just wonder, when you're squeezing pressure at work, what comes out your mouth? When you're squeezed under pressure in, an, in a, 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 a miscommunication with your spouse, what comes out? What you're full of. What you're full of. Come on, somebody. So, I got a little demonstration today. Uh, it says do not eat for the staff because I needed them and my staff will eat my brownies. <laughs> I made some brownies. Who's hungry today? Who need a little snack? You're hoping for a little sugar, a little sugar lift this morning. Go ahead and pat. Don't eat it yet. Don't eat it yet. There is a clause that comes with that brownie, but go ahead, hand them out. Enjoy. I don't need any leftovers because this is second service. I only made one tray. I needed half for first service, half for second. Go ahead. This, this kid right here needs a brownie right here, Ashley, right there. So nice, you have the hand up gently right there. Need a brownie. Need a brownie. Don't eat it yet, though. Don't taste it. Because, listen, listen, I'm not really like a gourmet baker. I'm more like a box baker. <laughs> it comes in a box. I can add water to it. And I'm going to say, this is a family recipe. <laughs> I am, too. I'm telling you. <laughs> I do, have, <laughs> I do have Femme Recipe chocolate chip cookies, though. It does start with just the Chips Ahoy ingredients on the back. But instead of it just being butter or oil, do half butter, half oil, changes the whole outcome of the cookie, family recipe. <laughs> right? Don't eat those brownies yet. Don't eat the brownie yet because although it was a box, I didn't know that you had to add extra ingredients to it. No, listen, I thought when you buy a box of brownies, that is everything. But then I was like, oh, no, you got to add to this, you know, extra stuff. I didn't have all that. <laughs> I didn't have all that stuff, okay? You're supposed to, like, cut, like, chocolate chips and little pieces of fudge. I didn't have all that. But what I do have is two dogs. And they go to the bathroom a lot. <laughs> Cut little pieces up. Throw it in a brownie. Throw it in a brownie. So straight up, you're holding a poop brownie. But it's only a little bit. It's only a little bit. You guys still want your brownies. Just don't eat a chocolate chip, bro. Just <laughs> <laughs> no, you don't want that, 
brownie because you ain't putting poop in your mouth. But it's just a little bit. Just a little bit. So, oh, so you won't put a little poop in your mouth. But you'll watch a movie full of poop. You'll listen to people's conversations full of poop. What a hypocrite, man. That's hypocrite, man. There's no poop in it. You can have them. <laughs> enjoy. Enjoy the brownie. I was just playing with you. I promise. I promise they're good. They're good. <laughs> they're not gluten-free, though. <laughs> nope. Straight out of box. Whatever was in the box, two eggs, milk, water, yeah, that's it. But listen, listen, oh, we can understand not to eat a poop brownie. But man, you know, there's just not that much cussing in it. It was funny. There wasn't that much nudity in it. It was great. There wasn't that much violence. Yeah, it's rated R, but eh. Just a little, just a pinch. Just a little bit. You ain't putting just a little poop in your mouth. <laughs> you ain't putting that in your mouth, but you will fill your heart with all sorts of doo-doo. <laughs> Seriously. We do it all the time. Oh, wait, you know, the meme, you know, my all the boys at work are sending this meme, it ain't that bad. It's mad funny. But you're putting it in your brain. You're putting it in your mind. You're putting it in your heart. I'm just being for real today. This isn't shame fest. I wrote this to me. But there's got to be a time in your life where poop brownies make you sick. And when you look at the results that you're getting in your life and you're not happy with the results you're getting in your life, it has to come back to something you're feeding yourself. Right, dude, that's a whole sermon right there. Right there, that, that, that right there is everything. If you're not happy with the results you're getting in your life, it's because of your mental diet. Yep. What are you feeding yourself? I really, really was not going to want to say poop brownies, but it was the only thing <laughs> that I thought we could really understand, right? Check this out. Galatians 5, 9 says this, a little yeast, a little yeast. Works its straight through the whole batch of dough. And what this verse is really saying is just a little bit of sin, just a little bit of bad behavior, just a little bit. When you leave it unguarded, unchecked, it begins to affect every area of your life. We won't eat a poop brownie, but we'll allow stinking thinking. A little here or there won't kill you. A little bitterness, listen, I don't have a lot of unforgiveness. It's just two people I hate. <laughs> don't work that way. That's, that's poop, man. That's a little poop. That's the same thing. I don't hate you, but don't ever talk to me again. That's a little pinch. A little negativity. I'm not, I'm not that negative. I'm just a little negative. No, you're negative. Listen. The plus side of a battery can never be negative. To be negative, you're negative. Even a little negative, you're negative. Oh, we're seeing this, right? We're seeing, because this was me. I wasn't happy with my results. Wasn't happy with being anxious, being angry. Yo, you want to talk about anger? Yo, right here, right here. <laughs> You see that TikTok of those two guys? I am boy. Oh, <laughs> I started singing because, like, I'm Irish, right? I'm Irish boy. Irish boys got some anger issues, man. They're just temper, right? So, like, my wife's Puerto Rican. So you put Puerto Rican anger with Irish anger. It's volatile. You got some fights, right? But someone asked me one time, I was like, yo, you know, when you were like dealing with anger or whatever, like, how many holes did you punch in your walls? None! <laughs> I never punched a hole in the wall. Are you kidding me? I have to go patch it up. 
So now I just did double work. And then I always thought to myself, yo, wonder if you hit a stud when you punched that wall. Then you broke your hand. And then I couldn't be a hand model anymore. I'm joking. I've never punched a hole in the wall. As angry as I've ever gotten, I've never punched a hole in the wall. And as your friend, brother, son, father, however you see me spiritually, if you find yourself in a place that you're hitting stuff, and your excuse is, well, at least I didn't hit them. You need to come talk to somebody. In all honesty, no shame. No, don't, listen, get that crap out, get the pride out of here. I'm not attacking anybody. When you get to a place that you're gonna punch holes in the house that you live, there's some issues that we need to talk about. There's some garbage that I can help you navigate in your life, because that's not healthy. It's not healthy. And listen, it's not healthy allowing the person that's committed their life to you to punch holes in your house. That's not healthy either. To live that way, in that fear, walking on eggshells, I don't want to set them off. You can't set them off. They're already set off. They're already set off. I'm just, I'm just my heart, my heart, my heart, my heart, there's, there's trash in our lives. Can I say about me for a minute? I believed lies about myself. I believed lies that I would self-destruct every time I did something good. I believed it. I believed that I would take five steps forward and 10 steps back. That just when I was about to do something great, I'd self-destruct and I'd ruin it all. I believed it. I believed my entire life. My sister was the smart one and I was the mechanical one. My sister's the one that's book smart and she's, you know, she's successful and all that. And then, Mike, you just do the mechanic stuff. And I believed that about myself. I believed I wasn't smart. I never tried reading a book because I knew I wasn't the smart one. Come on, somebody. I believed that I was like this angry bull and I was going to hurt people. And guess what I did? I lived my belief. I lived my belief. I lived like that angry bull plowing people over, hurting people, saying the wrong things because I believed it and it was wrong. It was stinking thinking and it was trash in my mind. Here's the truth. God did, me, God did make me to be a bull and he did make me to plow but it's new territory and new fields, not people. Amen. I'm gonna tell you in your life, especially if you're one of those go-getters, an entrepreneur, a business owner, that kind of aggressive go-getter. God made you that way, but we all need you healthy. We need you healthy because when you're not healthy, you will use that energy and that power to manipulate and destroy, and that's not who God made you to be. We gotta fix some of the thinking. There's some of you in here who you've allowed guys who are like bulls or women. Women can be bulls too to plow over you in their life and run you over, and that's not okay either. That's not okay that we let people do that. This is negativity and wrong thinking in our minds. The garbage in our lives has to go because it will affect every single thing that you do. So listen, it's time to take the trash out. It's time to take the trash out. We need to intentionally renew our minds. We need to get the trash out of our lives, we need to sweep it up, we need to clean it away. But then there's this idea, what do I do with all this? What do I do with all this? Wait, wait, because you know, like this, and then this, and then, I know it's empty. That's why it's trash, but it's mine. But it's mine. And you don't know what happened to me. You don't know what I went through and what this means to me. It's okay for me to have some trash because this is what I went through. I was hurt. I was damaged. I have a right to hold on to this. And isn't it funny? We can watch a television show called Hoarders Buried Alive and we realize, man, that person's got problems. But we do the same thing in our heart and in our mind. We'll hold on to stuff that needs to go. 
We'll hold on to things that are still affecting us. Watch this, Romans 12, 1. Therefore I urge you, he's like, I beg, I beg you, brothers and sisters, in the mercies of God, in the, in the view of God's mercy, God is so merciful, his mercies are new every day. His grace is sufficient. In light of that, present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your spiritual act of worship and do not conform any longer. Because he's saying, listen, we've been conforming. Don't conform any longer to the patterns of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Renew your mind. Renew your mind. And I want to help you today. I want to help you today to take out the trash of your life. Ready? This is going to be very, very practical. What I'm not going to tell you, I'm not going to tell you 25 new practices that you have to start. I'm going to make it very, very simple for you if you want to renew your mind. Are you ready? Are you ready? This is deep. This is deep. You ain't never heard this before. It's so deep. It's like nine miles deep. Ready? You want to get the trash out of your life? Stop adding to it. Are you ready? You ain't never heard this in church. You ain't never heard this in church. You ready for this? Stop looking at porn. Dude, I just fixed your marriage. I just helped your marriage out so much. I helped so much of your marriage right now. I just helped a lot of the dysfunction that you're having in your body and intimacy right there. Come on, man. Come on, man. Don't look at me like I'm not a dude in this century. Like I don't go to a therapist too. Come on, somebody. I really wish I wasn't as transparent as I am. I really do. Because it's like embarrassing sometimes. But I'm just trying to tell you something right now. All right, listen, I'm telling you right now. I'm going to help somebody right now. If there's something that you're dealing with that you know you need to get over, but you're fighting it, set yourself up to get caught. All right? So if you have a problem with things that you look at on digital devices, download a software that reports all of your internet activity to your spouse. Women and men. Oh, we want to do better until we hear that. <laughs> See, that's, that's the human condition. That's the human condition. We know we should go to the gym, but we don't. We know we should eat good, but we don't. We know, we know we should have filters on our internet and on our television. as long as God does all the work. Oh, you forgot this. Because the battle belongs to the Lord. Yeah, he's fighting. I'm not doing jack. Oh, no, you need to clean this crap up. He didn't put that there. He didn't put your crap there. We put that there for years and years and years we sewed into this stuff. If you, if you feel like that I'm shaming you or I'm, atta or I'm attacking you, you don't know who I am. You don't know my heart. I didn't write this to you, I wrote this to me. I'm saying I will walk through life with you, but you have to want to win. I don't want to hang out with people who are okay with losing. I'm not okay hanging out with people who are okay with participation prizes. I don't want a participation prize. I want first place. Man, to me, second place is the first place loser. I want to win at this life, man. I want the results that God has promised me. He says, I'm the head and not the tail, above and better and never beneath. How do I get that? 
How do I get that? How do I work all day really, really hard and still come home happy to my wife? How, how do I do that? How do I work really hard all day and then come home and have the energy to play with my kids who are asking me to play? That's, I don't want to answer that. And I want to answer that for you. And I want to give you the tools for that. Listen, you should not have to come home from work and consume an alcoholic beverage just to tolerate your family. We got to stop the trash from coming in. We got to stop consuming trash. And then here's the next one. And listen, I got a lot of messages and I do, I reply to every single one of them. I reply to every email and every message that I get on social media. People are asking me all these things about, you know, well, this, this case and this case and blah, blah, blah. And, and listen, if you don't like my answers, don't ask me questions. <laughs> Waste my time. But number two in this is this. Stop telling yourself you can't control your thoughts. Amen. Stop telling yourself, stop making excuses while, why you are different than everybody else and you can't control your thoughts but 99% of other people can. Come on, somebody. You're telling yourself, you're already giving yourself the out to why you don't have to control your thoughts. Right. You're a winner. You're a winner, you're not a victim. Yeah. You're not a victim. And just because someone in here has been victimized doesn't mean you need to live a victim life. Yeah. Yeah. We need to take control. Take control of our thoughts. Take control of our minds. Amen? Listen, your mind is a servant to either your body or your spirit you choose. Yeah. It will serve one. Yeah. Next, we must align our thoughts and our minds with the word of God. This is the, this is the, this is the one thing that maybe we need to add to Right? We need to add to it. Check this out. Finally, brothers, Philippians 4, 8, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, think about these things. If the thought that's coming in is not true, if it is not noble, if it is not right, if it is not pure, if it is not lovely, if it is not admirable, stop thinking about it. And I'm not talking about putting the guards back and saying, you know, I'm going to put this away. We can revisit this later. Incinerate it. Incinerate it. Burn that thing up, man. The Bible says that we are to quench fiery darts. Quench it out, man. Get rid of that thing. Don't, don't store it somewhere else. Now watch this. Think about such things. Whatever you have learned and received, you've heard of me, you've seen me put into practice, and the God of peace will be with you. Do you want peace? Yes. Then we got to start thinking about what is true and lovely and good. I'm telling you, man. Did I say this first? Did I say this to you already? About what you feed on? Like, stop watching so much news. Did I say this already? Exactly. Limit yourself to one hour. One hour from six to seven, whatever it is. Okay, I need to know what's happening. I need to be educated on what's happening around me. I need to know who I'm voting for and how that's going to work and what their stances are. We need to know those things. But don't watch it all day long. You're, you're consuming too much garbage, and we don't know what the truth is. I'm, I'm not getting political. Here's the litmus test. Ready? Is the approaching thought, does it agree with God's word? Does the approaching thought agree with God's word? Listen, here's what's crazy about the human mind. You know a bad thought is coming before it comes. You do. You do. You were never caught off guard by a bad thought. It started out real slow, and then it came upon. You already knew it. You already knew it was coming. It's a bad idea. It's a bad thought. Bad behavior. Does this thought agree with what God's word says? Does it agree with what God's word says? All righty, let me ask you this. Does this thought agree with God's word? You are an absolute loser. No. Huh? No, it does not. The Bible says you are blessed and highly favored. The Bible says you're the head and out the tail, above and ever beneath. The Bible says that you are made in the image and likeness of God. The Bible says everything you set your hands to will prosper and be successful. The Bible says that you are 10 times better. You're blessed in the city, you're blessed in the field. A loser can't do that. Bam, 
narrative, it's a lie. It's got to go. It's got to go. All right. Now, I'm going to close with this idea. Confess what you believe, not what you feel. Confess what you believe, not what you feel. We possess what we confess. We possess salvation by confessing Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior with our mouth, right? When you regularly confess only what you feel and see, you are actually hurting your faith and not helping negative thoughts to leave. Confess what you believe, not what you feel. If you keep confessing what you feel, your mind is gonna partner with your body. If you get your mind to partner with your spirit, you can live the life of victory. You choose who you're gonna give attention to. And here's what I'd like you to do. Here, here, here's how I combat negativity. Are you ready? Expect miracles. Yes. Expect miracles. Yes. Expect miracles. Expect miracles. Expect miracles. When someone, hey, listen, man, listen, 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 listen. If someone asks you to pray for them and then you're surprised when it worked, I don't want you praying for me. I don't want you praying for me if you're surprised when it works. I want people who expect miracles to happen to stand in prayer with me. Listen, I stand in awe of what God does and entrusts us with, but I'm never surprised that I can speak to a mountain and it be removed and cast into a sea. I'm never surprised that what I speak, I possess in my life. I'm never surprised that when I set my hands to something, it works and it's successful. That's the promise of God. That's the promise of God. I want you to believe in you. I want you to believe in you. You are your greatest asset. Believe in you. This is not mind over matter. This is not what I'm teaching. What I'm saying is connect your mind to your spirit being. You are so much better than you give yourself credit for. You are so much stronger than you give yourself credit for. Father, we thank you today that we could submit our minds to your lordship. We could submit our minds to what is true and lovely and pure. Help us, God. Help us, God, to stand guard of our hearts. We expect miracles. We expect miracles in our marriages. We expect miracles over our children. We expect miracles over our finances. We expect miracles over our health. We expect miracles over our country. Lord, we stand here before you, not knowing a lot of truth today, we submit to you. Lead us, guide us, direct us. If you're here today or watching online and you've never had an opportunity to make Jesus Christ the Lord of your life, he's the Lord, he's the Savior, he's the one that would come in and help clean this mess up. We wanna offer that to you today. We love you so much, we wanna pray this prayer out loud with you, and this is how we make that decision by the confession of our mouth, and it goes like this. Dear God, I come to you just like I am. I believe that Jesus Christ is my Lord and my Savior. Jesus, I invite you into my life to change me and to make me new. Thank you for accepting me in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. If you're watching online and you prayed that prayer for the very first time, would you type amen in one of our chat rooms? One of our online hosts would love to connect with you and give you our six-day devotional called Starting Point. If you're in the room today and you prayed that prayer for the very first time, would you allow me the honor to celebrate you for two seconds? Would you just wave at me and say, I prayed that prayer for the first time? Yeah, I see you. Anybody else real quick? Anybody real quick over here? Yeah, I see you. Awesome. Woo! Yeah, all right, I see you. Awesome. All right, great. Yeah, I see you. Awesome. Yeah, I saw him. I see you. And we're going to embarrass you. We're going to make you stand up and run around the whole banana. No, kidding. Man, so great, so great. I, I want to tell you guys, thank you for letting me interrupt the missions series to jump in on this one. I feel that more than ever, we're in a moment where we need to get control of our thoughts and, and control of our minds. 
uh, we're, we're in a place where as a country we begin to pick each other apart by, by ideas. It's just ideas because we don't have truth. And, and, and if you don't agree with my idea, my idea doesn't agree with your idea, then we just pick each other apart. It's just wild and we, we got control of our thoughts. We got to find out what the word of God says for the things that are filtering through our minds. Amen. Father, I thank you and I praise you for today, that your word will never return void, but it will accomplish exactly what you set it forth to do. Lord, I thank you for our next series where we talk about worship. Help us to worship you in spirit and in truth. As we leave here today, we are blessed. Everything we set our hands to will prosper and be successful in Jesus' name. Amen. Love you. Thank you for watching today's message. My name is Ashley, and if this message has made an impact in your life in any way, I'd like to ask you to do a couple of things. First, we want you to like and subscribe to our channel and join us right here every Sunday at 9.30 a.m. or 11.30 a.m. The next thing I'm gonna ask you to do is take a next step on your journey, and we would love to help you do that. You can head on over to familychurchny.com or email us at team at familychurchny.com to get started today.